Okay, I'm at Bucky's. I am uh, two hours, let me put you on the holder here. I am two hours in to, um, to my drive. Actually, no, an hour and a half into my drive. I've got six and a half hours to go to Lubbock. I need to stop somewhere around 1.30 p.m. for a deposition, and I'll show you exactly why I have to do this deposition. I saw this crash. So this crash happened right here. So you go down here. This is the um, exit to Bucky's in Bastrop. Now, to my right, no, to my left, there is a turning bay. So the uh, two lanes become three. And then I waited here. So what happened was, and I'll put a picture on the screen, there was a, um, uh, this is a left turn, right? So we're gonna make a left turn over the 21 uh, to go back to the 71. So I'm waiting uh, for the traffic. The speed limit's about 30 miles an hour on here, but people go 100,000 miles an hour. And then you edge across, and so what happened was this um, Jeep uh, with these two girls in it that had just gotten married to each other, um, that, you know, Austin. Um, so they were in the middle of the, like in the center divider, perfectly legal, perfectly fine. And then this blue pickup truck came barreling down and just uh, jumped the lane and slammed right into them, backed up and slammed into them again. And I'm sitting there in the Bucky's waiting to make that left turn, waiting for them to get out of that lane so that I can get into the center divider area um, and you know then the old guy gets out and starts screaming at the girls because you know they're LGBTQ and he starts saying all these like you know derogatory hate crime slurs and so I go around them to the other side of the road I pull over I park and I get out and I tell the girls I'm like I saw everything I snapped a photo after he hit you I was clear that you were in the right he was in the wrong and then the cop shows up and of course the cop also was like well you know we don't like these people around here i'm like you're 20 minutes from austin dude like what the hell like did i suddenly get morphed into you know backcountry like hateville i mean you're literally in one of the biggest lgbtq areas and like you know hipster tree hugging whatever millennial and you're gonna yell at these two girls because they were doing nothing wrong other than waiting to make a safe uh, left turn and the reason I know that they were there for quite a bit that they didn't just like veer over the lane and like cut the lane and cut in front of the guy no they had been sitting because I sat in the van thinking okay come on people I'm gonna wait you know like I was waiting for quite a bit for them to have a safe way to turn left but then they got plowed into by this guy but then the guy's wife gets out and starts screaming at me telling me go back to my home country I'm like lady my parents are from New Jersey <laughs> like you want to take on New Jersey right now and then you need to stop yelling at me so a few days later and this was 4th and 5th of July 2021 so then a few days later I go down to the Bastrop uh, police station so this is Bastrop where I'm at right now it's about 20 minutes from Austin so I go down to the Bastrop police station to make a statement and draw a little picture and show them my photos and the cop was like well it doesn't really matter what you say I've already made up my mind about those people I said what people I said that they did nothing wrong and so for three years now the lawyers have been battling because these girls end up with a lot of you know physical injuries and they got hit so hard the jeep actually went up on two wheels the two uh driver side wheels and then bounced back down the second time he slammed into them and i used to work for honda acura uh, toyota so i used to do safety training videos sales training videos and i can tell you that when somebody hits the back of the vehicle like that the way that they were hit and I looked at the vehicle at the crash scene, I'm like, there's absolutely no way they were even moving. There was no, there was a, just a hard, big old hard dent that happens when you hit a parked car. And that's what that guy did. If they had been moving, there would have been scratches, there would have been bumpers ripped off. You know, there would have been other damage indicative of the vehicle in motion while it was getting hit. But that's not what happened. They got hit in the back driver's side door and the rear, the, the passenger door on the, on the driver's side and they got hit twice by this guy that jumped the lane. I mean, their wheels weren't even in any of the lanes. They were waiting patiently in their Jeep. So my deposition today is basically, you know, tell them what I saw. I mean, I've, driven, I've done this drive that I'm doing now probably about 500 times. I dated someone in Austin for a couple of years. I've been out in Austin a lot. I come out here to see friends. I come out here on my own. I go through here to get to other places. The, the 10 to the 71 is like the staple drive for me. It's, it's two and a half hours and I've done this times. So I told the lawyers, I said, I, I know that drive. I've done that left turn hundreds of times.
very, very pretty. I'll show you. Okay, zoom in a little bit. So I'm on this on a carrier holder. Can't really get this side right here. There. <laughs> anyway, it's very, very beautiful and um, yeah, really, really pretty drive. So yeah, best time of year to be in Texas is right before it becomes the surface of the sun, <laughs> which, you know, this photo here is a very accurate depiction of where Texas is located in the solar system. Anyway, okay, so I'm heading on. I'm not stopping for gas yet. I'm probably stopping about 40 miles, get out of Austin. It's Monday morning and, uh, no, Tuesday morning, sorry, Tuesday morning. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to head another 400 miles toward Lubbock. So I'll probably stop in Sweetwater and do the deposition. I'll be there probably about one or two. And then after that, I head up to the Cracker Barrel in Lubbock and uh, early night tonight. And then tomorrow I've got a drive to Albuquerque. So yay, getting out of, getting out of Houston for about, you know, two weeks uh, just to kind of get some fresh air, clear my head. And then in the interim, we'll have another, uh, another place anytime which you'll see uh, a little bit later so yeah okay well um, it's looking like it's trying to rain but it's not anyway it's good it's 50 it's 49 degrees this morning so I get a little bit of winter as I'm leaving Texas but it's gonna be cold up in uh, Arizona northern Arizona and Utah uh, but I'm gonna be predominantly in Utah and except on the 10th of April I'll be on the way so we'll see okay exciting glad to be back in Prudence she is uh, puttering along great feels perfect and uh, yeah I need to get an oil change in about uh, 1200 miles so I'll probably do that in Albuquerque. I've got a few days in Albuquerque uh, this week so I've got tomorrow afternoon and then oops slow down Ooh, sorry there is uh I have an 80 foot 68 60 to 80 foot stopping distance on this van so it's like just uh, that's another thing too know your stopping distances when you cut in front of people because uh, it's going to take me about a football field to stop <laughs> most days when I'm going, you know, 60 miles an hour. But yeah, you can see over here. Those are the blue bonnets. Um, but yeah, so, okay. So it's going to be, you know, a fun Tuesday. Nothing else too exciting. Just heading into Austin in some morning traffic. It's 10 a.m. I do need to stop and uh, maybe when I get gas, I'll stop and have a quick snack and then... Um, Head on, but yeah, this is an easy drive. I've done the drive out of Texas through Lubbock a hundred times probably since the pandemic. I mean, it's kind of my staple drive. Uh, it's easier than going through well, I didn't have no reason to go through Dallas, but it's just kind of you just go diagonally across the state. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty this time. And I have to go during the day because once you get past Lubbock to Amarillo, there's uh, there's not a lot but there are a ton of deer at night and uh, you end up having to go about 30 miles an hour. <laughs> I didn't even like take a shower this morning. I just got on the road. There's Bucky, there's my co-pirate, um, scowling, eh, scowling at all the drivers, you know. It's easier for him to like scowl at them than for me to like, like here you don't beef at people and you don't flip people off because people have guns. <laughs> so I don't have a gun. I've never owned a gun in my life. Anyway, but yeah, so um, yeah, excited to, uh, get out around oh there's a texas colorado let me show you there's a texas colorado rolling exhibit <laughs> like uh like the colorado river which is uh if you go out to like colorado bend state park i think guadalupe bend no guadalupe uh state park or kind of like east of, uh, west of austin the colorado river that i think goes down to like i have to show you a map anyway it's very very beautiful it goes all the way up to georgetown all the way down and um, it's really pretty. And Colorado Bend is a really, really fantastic state park. Up in Georgetown, you've got Tejas and Cedar Breaks, which are also fantastic. I've done videos on both of those. Um, so definitely, you know, check those out. Check out um, Perdinales. That's another one. Um, Perdinales uh, near Enchanted Rock. Uh, again, I've been to all of these, so there's videos and everything. Um, so watch all of them, uh, like, and hit that subscribe button. All right, okay, nothing else to report. Just looking at the beautiful flowers and uh, going my questionable soft 70 miles an hour here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna head into Austin. It's very quick in and out, just bypassing all of downtown and just going around. I think I get on the toll road at one point um, and then I just head north. And it is gonna be a really pretty drive between Austin and uh, Abilene. It is like so many pretty little small towns. They've got a place called Barry. If you're ever in, um, if you're ever driving north, stop off in a little town called Barry, B-A-R-R-Y. They have the weirdest, like the weirdest antique 
shop. I didn't have time to stop on this on this trip today. Um, but I'll tell you, their their antique shop is like out of this world. I don't even like antiques, but they've got lots of weird, creepy stuff, like weird baby heads stuck on lampshades, you know, stuff like that. But um, there's some really cool things, and I did get one thing from there, um, which I never ended up putting in the van. It was an old scale from like the 1920s that I got for like 25 bucks, and I thought that would be kind of a cool thing. But then I realized once I hung it, it just made noise the constantly, like the whole time. So I took it out and put it at home. But um, yeah, I mean, they, uh, they, it's just a really cute little town and they have all these little like town squares and they'll have farmers markets, you know, some of the days of the weeks and you know, you never know what you stop, you know, stop at uh, when you're driving rather than flying. So that is the advantage of in van life. Yeah, it takes a while to get places. It's, you know, you drive a thousand miles in Texas and you're still in Texas. It's like, how is that possible? Like, like 99% of my trip is going to be Texas just to get to New Mexico and, and uh, Arizona and Utah, but it's an easy drive. Um, gas is cheap and the roads are very well maintained. Um, there's not any traffic once I get out of Austin. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of a mindless, just one way, the whole way. <laughs> uh, I know where all the gas stations are, um, so I don't have to worry. I, I don't actually, so here's the thing, on my planning this trip, I don't actually know where I'm staying because free roam, unfortunately, doesn't exist anymore. So I need to probably start checking iOverlander or Park for Night. I've never used Park for Night, and I only use iOverlander like if I'm really desperate for a place or I need to know like where to dump my toilet out. Um, but I, I never really rely on iOverlander because a lot of times what people are doing is they are um, putting fake locations, like you know, saying that you can boondock at this place and it's like their ex-boyfriend's house, <laughs> you know, and then you know, guy comes out with a shotgun like get off my lawn. So. Um, yeah, you have to be really careful with iOverland. There's a lot of fake things, things that aren't updated, and, and it will even say on the website, like, this is not verified. Sorry, there are so many flowers right now. All of that is so pretty. Texas. <laughs> There's a lot of things that you're not pretty about, like my uterus. Can I have that back, please? But yeah, let me, let me get that blue sky there. Thank you. Anyway, I'm not getting into uh, laws made by men. <laughs> it's like, thanks, guys. For deciding, you know, as I hit menopause, thank you for, for canceling my ability to plan my family. Anyway, it'll be nice to get out. I just need mountains, epic, uh, non-humidity, no mosquitoes. You know, I've got this list of checklist of why I love southern Utah and northern New Mexico <laughs> for all these reasons. Uh, Texas, though, you know, they've, we've got a lot of hidden gems uh, when you get to the nature side of things. Um, but a lot of people just boycott it completely because of the politics. But I tell you, it's like going to any you know, dangerous country or war-torn country or, you know, a country that people deem dangerous, majority of the time the locals are like, we don't even like our government. Like, we're not representative of our government. We're representative of our culture, which has, you know, risen out of the uh, strife and struggle. And that's what you need to put your money toward. That's what you, who you need to meet and how who you need to be interacting with and promoting are the people that are kind of stuck in these places. Um, because a lot of people that have to live in Texas, I've lived in Texas, you know, I've got to live in Houston um, right now. So am I, you know, representative of the, the government here? No. Do I support Governor Abbott? No. <laughs> would I like my uterus back? Yes. <laughs> I would like some other rights as well, please. But yeah. So that said, I've babbled enough and I will uh, meet with you later. This is just a driving day. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Nothing too exciting. Just me and Bucky and a uh, bunch of crap in the back. So it's exciting. I'm, I've reorganized the van. And the, I've cleaned the van. The door does not open. So we will figure that out, I think, when I get back from, from this trip. Um, unfortunately, no Nissan dealer I've been to so far has ever experienced this problem because there aren't really a lot of Nissan vans in Houston. You go to Maryland, like Baltimore, yeah, there's millions of them. Like for some reason, the the East Coast loves these vans, which is where I got bought. I bought this in Baltimore, and then they sold it while I was on the plane. So I ended up going to Dulles Airport to a dealership near there in Sterling, Virginia, and ended up getting Prudence. So then drove back 1,400 miles. Um, but yeah, so it's very much um, it's very much not a uh, Nissan NV country down here. Um, but we figured out that that's another potential issue with the door. And I think if they just fix that whole 
computers you can see that on the the uh, unexpected problem with the door it was unexpected for me because i had never seen a video about that being the problem it's always been the sensor or the latch and nobody's ever like taken the panel off and taken a look at the electrical so i'm pretty sure it's because that extra wire is too stretched out i don't know where that goes uh, we think it goes to the, the latch and the lock and neither of those are actually functioning right now so i'm getting tailgated by a jerk in a pickup truck so yes another problem of texas is drivers in giant pickup trucks with tiny manhood it's like i get it you're overcompensating for what you're lacking in but please don't tailgate me because i don't really want to slam my brakes on today thank you so, all right i will uh see you because i keep saying i'm gonna leave now <laughs> i got like six hours of driving so i'm gonna be inside my head for a while and hour drive day has now turned into a 12 or 14 hour drive day so I had um, a deposition for the crash uh, that took about three hours so sat in uh, Coleman Texas some small town actually it's really cute small town sat there and did that in the van and then I just had zoom with Harriet so it's been a, a day of sitting in a really stiff position and then driving on top of it so I'm glad tomorrow once I get to Albuquerque I'm going to drop off the um, the bike uh, as soon as I get there, get rid of the bike and have them do some bike washes and stuff. And then after that, I will um, go rollerblade. So that's the plan. Um, but yeah, so that's it. So now I'm driving into the sunset. Actually, it's nice now. It's uh, almost eight o'clock, so it's still bright outside. <laughs> it's actually brighter on this than you see out there. Um, but thankfully, the sun's already setting, so I'm not going to be like blinded. I have to like wear sunglasses at night where I'm just like this the whole time driving like it is not darkness and the sun is still in my eyes oh what a long day I've not really eaten anything for dinner I've just been snacking and I think I'm a little dehydrated because I was on zoom for like four hours total today so that said I'm excited to get to Lubbock so I've got an hour and 54 minutes I need to get gas probably Let's see, I've got 126 miles. I will get gas, not here. I think I'll get gas further up. There's always a gas station. <laughs> you know, I'm not worried about that. Uh, I should probably get it here in Sweetwater. Why do they have three Allon gas stations in a row? I need to look at Gas Buddy, which is the other app that I use, um, and see if I can find a Loves or something. So green light, so green light means go. So I'll see you later. Okay, just to let you know, if you have the Loves app on your phone, you get 10 cents off a gallon, so it'll only be uh, $2.99. Uh, I haven't been to a Loves in a, quite a while, a couple weeks, I think. Actually, no, actually, I think January when I was, uh, yeah, I haven't been to a Loves in a while. So, um, they don't really have a good selection of food, not really too impressed, um, not really hungry, actually. They have Arby's, but... Mm. I'm going to be in bed in about an hour and a half, so let me stop here and get my gas. All right, I'll take you in and I'll show you what they have for snacks, and we'll just, uh, you know, get our get our food going. So they have your usual snacks and candy. <laughs> um, beer, which is funny, like you drive to gas stations, drink and drive. No, please don't do that. Candy, I don't really like candy. I don't like American chocolate, only British chocolate. Uh, sports drinks, orange juices. Actually, I do fancy an orange juice. I didn't bring the one that was in my fridge. Um, so I think I'm gonna get a large orange juice. Somehow the large orange juice is a better deal than the uh, small one. Um, and then they've got some prepared foods as well. Again, not really that much of a selection. Just kind of some giant cookies, bland salads, chocolate mousse, cheesecake, eggs, all like all the stuff that'll make you fart on the drive. And then uh, cookie dough to make people eat and fall asleep. And then they've got showers. Showers are actually really nice, but they're like 15 or $16 a shower. So I've only used them one, once or twice actually. And then they have beef jerky, which is great. So I'm gonna get an orange juice, I think. So I have made it to Cracker Barrel. <laughs> Hello again, <laughs> it's been a while. So there's a couple campers in the back. Um, this is great. So Lubbock is Texas Tech. That's the university that's here. So Waco, Texas 
has um, Baylor University, I believe, and then you've got University of Texas at Austin, UT Austin. So it's quite safe here, and there's a couple rigs. There's a camper with a clamshell. I have to learn all the names. I don't know what like fifth wheel or any of that stuff is. Bunch of people really close to each other. I guess they know each other. So we've got a, um, I don't know, you can't even really see, but we've got this guy, him. We've got that guy. And then we've got a um, factory built sprinter. And they're all parked like right on top of each other. I don't know if they all know each other. So I'm not gonna park right on top of each other. I'm gonna go down a little bit further. No one has a generator, so that's good. Um, so I'm gonna park down see how loud it is. Okay, I don't hear anything. I'd rather park by the road because I can sleep better, but yeah, I'm just going to park um, in the back behind these shipping containers, which are right here. And this will be my spot. There's a guy sleeping in a car there. So I think I'm going to park Yeah, I think I'll just, is this, I don't know, they're sharing a, sorry, they're sharing a parking lot with at and I don't know who has at if you have at and I don't know, I mean, I'm a, I'm a Sprint T-Mobile person, but yeah, I think I'm just going to park back here, I think that's fine, I'm pretty sure that's fine, yeah, because it's like a um, restaurant, like a 24-hour burger place there and there's some like big rigs so I think if I park behind actually I'd rather park behind this uh, massive concrete block here so yeah parking behind that so let me back up I don't want to be too close to the car camper but I do want to back up and not hit the tree so I think this is my spot this is perfect I am hidden behind the giant cargo containers which I just watched a Mr. Beast episode where he was like you know try to save the Lamborghini and it's it's funny but they have to like build a fortress around the Lamborghini and then drop a bunch of stuff like flaming cars and like freight trains on top of it so I'm hoping I did not just park myself in front of a Mr. Beast episode it's like okay try to protect the uh, converted cargo van I'm gonna drop a bunch of burning debris on it now I'm like great I don't know aliens don't land for a lot of reasons and I think that's it they look at us look down at the planet and they're like uh what what are those people doing <laughs> so sorry i'm backing up a hundred times i'm trying to not hit the tree that's behind me so that is right there the tree has not been hit because the tree was hit <laughs> okay hang on oh. okay so <laughs> I didn't want to hit the tree. I also don't want to be right in the view. So let me, I'm gonna to have to be pretty close to that guy. I'm sorry. I just don't want to back into a tree. I was looking for the, um, what is it called? Not the tree stump, the, the, the body of the tree. And then I ended up scratching on the branches. So I'm just gonna park one, two spaces away from that guy. I'm sorry. I know it's like the, uh, the rule in BLM. It's like, if you're like, 700 yards near my van you're way too close dude i'm like hey it's public land people oh, i see what i'm doing i'm having a hard time getting in the space because okay so i want to go in this space here not the one with the tree oh, i'm tired i do not sleep well the first night i'm in the van usually usually it's kind of like i'm just not really not really used to it but I will tell you, I'm gonna sleep very well tonight. And then tomorrow I'm getting up at five or 6 a.m. as I always do get up super early in van life and I'm gonna to drive to Albuquerque. So that is the plan. So, okay, we are parked. We have not hit a tree. There's that tree is right there. That's the one that I was almost best friends with a minute ago. Okay, that's it. So good night. Good morning from Cracker Barrel. It is uh, seven o'clock, 7.30 and it's pitch black. So, um, well, <laughs> pitch black for me. For some reason, the iPhone's like, it's 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I have to drive to, or sorry, I get to drive to New Mexico today and I gain an hour. So I slept in a little bit. Um, the camper next to me is still there with the clamshell and then the other people left. 
But yeah, I slept like a rock. I didn't hear any trains behind me. I did hear the trash people in the morning opening the, um, the cargo crate, so that was a little bit loud. But other than that, yeah, peaceful night. So the Lubbock Cracker Barrel, I think it's on Milwaukee Avenue, uh, is perfect. So, and it's nice I can kind of hide behind these things and not have to, you know, have the street uh, ogling me and going, oh, that's a cool rig you got. Anyway, <laughs> so, when I'm at the gas station, it's like, that's a nice little van you got there, Missy. I'm like, go away. You're not looking in my van. I can't even open the door. So yeah, so okay, so now we're heading to uh, New Mexico, <laughs> my happy place. I'm going to be spending today and part of tomorrow in Albuquerque and then flying out. So um, just a short and sweet, I've got to drop the bike off at Trek uh, today and leave it to get a quick uh, tune up and come get it on, uh, come back and get it on Monday or Tuesday actually when I'm back on Tuesday. And then um, actually I fly on Monday. Yeah, so Monday I'll pick it up Monday and then I head out. So then I head up into Utah. So it's good. A couple five hour drive days uh, today and Monday. And then um, after that, it's pretty short drives all the way through Utah. So that's going to be pretty exciting. And yeah, this is just kind of uh, killing time for a couple weeks until um, until, I, until I do the wave. So the wave is in April, but I figured I've got some time now. I need to get out of Houston for a little bit and I need to get some R&R. &R. You know good for the old mental health and uh well-being so that's always important for self-care and that's cool so okay let's uh get some gas and get on the road i spoke too soon there's the train so thankfully it didn't come through in the middle of the night but there it is these trains are like miles and miles long it's crazy anyway okay now i'm leaving forget because I've been to so many Trek stores and so many cities I forget which is which so it's cold it is like 55 degrees and windy so it should be fine so I'm gonna go do this now all right I'm back at my other happy place this is the Alameda open space uh, or the Bosque Trail and it goes along I think the Rio Grande River um, possibly uh, anyway so um, this is where I do rollerblading and I also mountain bike um, but mostly rollerblade because it's about, I think, a total 28 miles down and back. Um, so 14 miles, oh, there's a tree, 14 miles down, 14 miles back. But I think I'm only doing 12 today. Um, but this is fantastic. And uh, they have porta potties if you need to dump out your pee, pee jug. <laughs> so that's good too. And I'm going to park in the sun. So we've got sun, trail, uh, it's everything you could possibly want. So uh, I don't have bikes on the back, I keep forgetting now. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go get my rollerblades on. I'm very, very tired, but I think stretching my legs would be good um, since I will be doing another activity where I need my legs. <laughs> so you'll see that uh, coming up uh, in a couple days. Um, well, in whatever, a couple weeks when I make these videos. Okay, so let me park and uh, yeah, not a lot of people here, but really safe, really dog friendly. Uh, fantastic trail. There's also the nature centers down here and there's a lot of little kind of sandy back trails you can also ride uh, your mountain bike on. Okay, I am ready. My glasses are wonky for some reason. <laughs> it's okay. I don't care how stupid I look anyway. But yeah, I've got mismatched uh, elbow pads and knee pads because I can't find half of this set and the other half of the other set. So this is what I'm working with. Okay, I think I'll do 12 miles and then I'll be done. And then I'll uh, park up at Cracker Barrel and tomorrow go to Planet Fitness, probably run in the morning and then head to the airport. So more on that later. Okay, I'm six miles in. Usually I would come down here and keep going that way. Um, probably another, let's see, I've done 20 miles. So probably another four miles that way and then turn around, but I'm tired. <laughs> um, so uh, the nice thing is there's a couple nice uh, slopes here so I can practice uh, going side to side for some reason. <laughs> anyway, it's just walking. It's gravelly here, so I have to walk. I can't just, I can't skate on this bit. Anyway, uh, nice neighborhood. Yeah, this is Albuquerque. This is the Bosque Trail, and there's the river. And then if you go down about uh, three, four miles, you'll start to hit the Botanical Garden. 
uh, and there's a nice park with some lakes uh, yeah, little like small ponds um, and then there's the nature center on the uh, right hand side and all up here as well a little bit further up you can also go ride and walk around all of the nature trails over there so this whole right side of the trail if you're going south is uh, the nature park and they have another nature park up this way uh, that is fee based so you have to pay to get in um, that's a nice little garden i've never actually been in there i've been to the botanical garden a few times i've ridden through the uh the little back area over here i've ridden my bike and rollerbladed on here uh, actually rollerblading is better because i've had two flat tires uh, riding on my bike here um, so uh, rollerblading is much better anyway i like all these adobe homes i want to live in new mexico one day and i want i want a white and dark brown uh, like the wood is dark brown and the adobe is white that's the kind of uh home that i would like or a container home uh, but obviously you have to do the aesthetic of the neighborhood so oh okay there's tailwind now i'd headwind the other way okay six miles back i've only been skating for about 40 minutes so i go pretty pretty fast <laughs> i know 10 miles an hour or so which isn't very fast like in the world of you know cars <laughs> but when you're on eight wheels it is quite speedy. Uh, okay, and after this, I'm going to freshen up and uh, go to Walmart. I need to get contact solution. I forgot all six bottles that I bought. Uh, they're all at home. So I get contact solution and uh, yeah, I think get gas and then park up at Cracker Barrel. And then I'm just going to veg out and watch Netflix, do Zoom with Harriet and uh, have an early morning tomorrow. I think I'll try to run at the gym in the morning at Planet Fitness take a shower and then head to the airport about probably about 11 a.m. I have a zoom at 12 and then I'm flying out at 2 40. Okay for a minute there I thought it said pole dancing I'm like oh yeah that's right <laughs> oh god no that would be more like trash collecting if I try to do that. Okay this is the nature park so after you come up this bit it's a dead end and I go this way and up there you can also come here and they have a map right here for the nature trail. Cool, okay, over the bridge. Ooh. All right, I am done. I'm gonna dump out my porta potty and uh, get changed. <laughs> I'm so tired. It has been a long day. I got up at 4.30, 5 a.m. Drove six hours to Albuquerque, got the bike sorted, uh, dropped those off, uh, and then rollerbladed 13 miles. So, all right, these have to go off now. Okay, bye bye, rollerblades. I will replace you with another foot mechanism this weekend. So, okay, bye. So, I will say the bungee cords are holding up well, although I keep getting tangled up in them trying to put these two boxes back in. Um, anyway, okay, so I found everything I needed. I uh, still don't know where my black set of knee pads and elbow pads are. They might be at home. Uh, occupational hazard of having a sticks and bricks is half this stuff was taken out uh, late last year when I got home in the November uh, when I did the big deep clean. So, and I also have these hiking boots or hiking shoes that I've never used. But I think I'm going to start wearing those for um, trail riding because when I have to push the bike up, my um, sneakers don't have the grips for hiking but these do and these are like hiking shoes I've never worn them they're a little bit big though even though they're size nine I feel like I'm wearing like clown shoes so all right uh okay all right stop dilly dallying I'm hungry and thirsty it is so dry here compared to Houston it feels good I mean I love I love this weather and I can't believe I'm back in Albuquerque I was just here in November and it's so good to be back I am so happy that I'm here for exactly two days and then I'll be back on uh, April 17th, I think, when I have to come pick up the bike. So, yes, okay. All right, thank you, Bosque Trail. You were good for me for 13 miles. I would have done 20, but it is late in the day and I am a busy girl, so there you go. Well, thank you for coming along. I am now parking myself at the Cracker Barrel in Albuquerque and we got a couple neighbors. We've got some, uh, we've got a um, Dodge Ram Pro Master. We've got an ambulance. That's pretty cool. We have the uh, bus. 
and I think I'm gonna park, uh, usually park here behind me, but I think as long as they don't have a generator, they have a generator. Okay, that's a um, school bus right there. That's pretty cool. Uh, I think I'm just gonna park, or I usually park in the back. And it is early, it is only five o'clock, but I have a Zoom in about an hour with Harriet, so I'm just going to sit and relax. And I think after the Zoom, I'm gonna go move and go get gas. I don't wanna do it right now because it's rush hour traffic, but yeah. There used to be, there used to be some pods. I used to park next to the pod. So I think for now, I'm just gonna park in the back over here. I don't want to be too close. See, be one one space apart. But yeah, it's always interesting seeing all the different builds. But anyway, so I'm gonna park. Oh, I don't want to park over there with this gloss. Okay, I'm gonna turn around and park at the end. I think that's fine. All right, my Zoom is done, and I'm not gonna leave because there's a lot of people here. It's getting busy. So we've got me, the ambulance, camper van. We've got a sprinter van. We've got the Pro Master. And uh, yeah, so I think I'll just stay, it's quiet. I don't think anyone's doing a generator unless that bus revs up, but plenty of spots. There's also a whole big parking lot on the other side as well. And there's some guy with a sprinter and a trailer that took up six spots. And then some uh, car campers over there. So I need a cup of tea. I think I'm gonna make a cup of tea outside my van. <laughs> okay, my cup of tea is on its way and the fire extinguisher is right there. <laughs> so. We should be fine. Good morning from the old saltine bucket, <laughs> the cracker barrel. Um, we've got Amrit dot on the way, hashtag Instagram on the bus. We've got the uh, motorhome. There was a giant motorhome that was probably one of those like $3 million ones. I had a trailer as well and they circled about four times. I wish I got it on video. I was talking to my daughter on Zoom, but it circled three times. I was like, nope, not today, buddy. <laughs> Like, you don't get to sit here. You can't sit with us. <laughs> it's like on Wednesday we wear pink. Anyway, um, over here we've got a um, Mercedes factory built. That looks like a custom built uh, with a bit of paint chips. Yeah, that's a custom built one. Uh, that one over there. <laughs> so... It's so quiet. I sleep so well here that I don't want to get up in the morning. That's how well I sleep. Anyway, okay, so I'm off to the gym. It is 6.30, 6.48 in the morning. And I'm going to go take a shower. I don't think I'm going to run. I've got a long travel day today. I am flying to uh, California, to Burbank. So I need to, um, let's see. Oh, there's another one with the trailer. Yeah, I'm flying to uh, Burbank, so I'm gonna pass through Vegas. I only have an hour and a half layover in Vegas, but it's funny because I stopped through Vegas 30 times last year when I flew 58 times on Spirit, but this time I'm flying on Southwest. So I actually get to check a bag um, because I'm going um, skiing. <laughs> so I have to take an actual suitcase because my ski gear is, is so, uh, there's a lot of stuff when you have ski gear. Okay, I'm all minty fresh and look, you have to look. There's balloons in the sky. Oh, <laughs> that makes me happy. That makes me so happy right now. Oh, the little things. Alrighty, I'm at Walmart and I need to pick up a few things, uh, contact solution, uh, makeup, a few toiletries, and maybe another bottle of water. Um, and then I'm gonna go get an oil change afterwards. I wasn't, because I thought I still had a thousand miles before my oil change. Um, and then I realized I don't, I have a hundred miles <laughs> before my oil change. And so uh, I don't wanna be dealing with that up in things, a uh, place like Moab or down in St. George, because um, I don't think they have take five out there. So let me find a parking space where I can park like a jerk, <laughs> like this guy. Sorry, it's very bright this morning. Yeah, he's like, let me take nine spaces. That's fine, you have no choice. <laughs> so, anyway, okay, yeah, so quick trip, and then it's only like eight, uh, it is 8.30, so I've got plenty of time, and then I'm going to uh, head to the airport. All right, so I'm getting an oil change. I don't know if I'll fit. Okay, let's see. Am I gonna fit? 
Do I fit? Yeah. Are you sure? Okay, I always get scared, so just oil change. Oh, yeah. thank you for the water. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, pop the hood. Yeah, that's fine. So they already checked fluids in the tires back in Houston, but okay. I, well, I had to drive a thousand miles before I was ready to get the oil changed. So, okay. yeah, so everything, but you can check anyway. Everything should be fine. Yeah. All right, oil change is done. And I'm scared. <laughs> I hear stuff. I hear the, the flag is hitting. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. Honk if you received great service. <laughs> I never get out of these faces. Okay, I am now going to go park and repack my suitcase into a duffel bag because I don't want to take the suitcase. So, all right, it's getting toasty. All right, let's go find a parking lot so I can be a bum for a minute. <laughs> so, all right, and then going to the airport. Airport's only like. 15 minutes away. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Okay.